the U.S. isn't the only one who's slowing down right now. I mean, obviously, China you know, has had some deceleration. You know, it looks like uh, Germany just barely missed a technical recession um, at the end of last year. Italy is also slow. So it's not only the United States, but it's, it's everywhere. And it kind of looks and feels like, to me, late 2015, early 2016. You also had the same sort of concerns about slowdowns in China and what sort of effects that would have. You had a big decline in oil prices and, you know, the cutbacks in the energy space here. So it kind of looks and feels very much like like that time period. We shook well. off an actual recession at that point. You think that happens this time too? Yeah, I, I do. You know, if you look at the underlying fundamentals of the U.S. economy, they still remain pretty strong. You know, if you look at interest expense among businesses, it's not at a very, very high level. The savings rate among consumers remains very high as well. But you certainly could have a lot slower growth here in the in the first part of the year. And if you go back to 2016, the Fed was on hold for that entire year. And, you know, fast forward three years, potentially you could be looking at the same sort of thing. All of the numbers Steve just pointed out, the weakness that we've seen in recent months, that was uh, numbers through December before you got to these concerns that we're facing right now with the government shutdown, before you got to the Brexit kind of hitting a wall, mm -hmm. and before you even had us getting closer and closer to this countdown with the China trade talks. What, what does that mean? Where does that put us? It means that uh, growth in the, in the first quarter of this year um, is probably going to be pretty weak. Um, you know, our How official, weak? Well, so our official forecast at this point, and this was done a few weeks ago, is 2.2 percent. Yeah, what's your confidence level to, in the 2.2? Well, I say the risk of that is skewed to the downside right now. I mean, are we, are we talking a negative sort of number? I mean, I think things have to get a lot worse in terms of the government shutdown and, and a big deceleration in China for us to get to those sorts of numbers. Are you but, talking on one handle, though, for sure? You no, know, I wouldn't say for necessarily for sure. We're going to have to crunch some of the numbers. We were talking about this early. We don't have a lot of those numbers, you know, right now because of the government shutdown. But, uh, you know, again, it seems like maybe the, the, the risk to that 2.2 is skewed to the downside. Is it possible that we end up just slowing, but that growth doesn't end up all that slow? And I, it's very hard to have this conversation now because it's one of those things where I don't know what the economy would have done without the government shutdown. But it seemed like in the normal course of action, you had this slowdown that was happening and the market kind of freaked out about that it was like well wait a second we're going to slow down and that was what the economic forecasters had said all the all along was going to happen you were going to you did four in the second quarter and then you were kind of stepping down towards three and then we're going to go to two and a half and that's not a bad outcome if you do two and a half as a slowdown from what happened in 2018 is it i mean that's that's kind of a quote soft landing you know if you come in at two you know two and a half percent yeah, and I don't think you would expect us to stay at three or four percent. You know, the, the Fed hiked rates 100 basis points last year. That's going to have a slow, slowing effect on the housing market. Um, some of the fiscal stimulus is starting to wane in terms of you know, the government spending increases and things of that nature. So to expect us to remain at a three or four percent number forever, I just thought was you know, a little bit uh, unrealistic.